All right. Thanks for coming. So we've just got a couple people sitting out um, grabbing what's left of the salad. I um, hope the pizza's good. So we're here to talk about a master's degree in exercise science, um, a brand new collaboration uh, with one of our strongest academic partners, Concordia University. And I think it's important for you to understand why a master's degree in anything really, in addition to your doctorate of chiropractic, might be of benefit to you. Uh, when I graduated, I stayed here as a resident in sports injuries and rehabilitation and slave for the university for two more years. Um, did a lot of self-study, and what I'm kicking myself about since I had left was why did I not consider doing a master's degree in addition to my two-year residency? Uh, because what it would have done is made me a lot more uh, marketable to my patients, having an area of expertise, an academic expertise in a particular field, and in this case would be exercise science. And that certainly appeals to me um, and for my particular sports chiropractic market. It also would make me more marketable to institutions in the area on multiple levels. So let's talk about learning institutions. I went back to West Fargo, North Dakota and opened up practice. I would have been much more marketable to the universities and colleges in that area, including Concordia, uh, Moorhead, NDSU, if I had an advanced degree in addition to my doctor of chiropractic degree if I was interested in teaching anatomy, physiology, maybe some exercise science classes. And so it allows you to be more marketable in your community, allows you more job opportunities as well. If you're interested in doing research when you leave this institution, whether you stay at this institution or leave this institution, you're interested in doing some research, having an advanced academic degree also would, would allow you um, to achieve grants easier, possibly, as well as collaborate with an institution wherever you might be. Um, and also, those of you, and I see many of my current sports interns and future sports chiropractic interns out in the audience, uh, those of you that have kind of been in our shadow of, of the Human Performance Center, and, and I, I love having you in our shadow, it's great. But if you're interested in working with local high schools in the athletic department, or working with your local institution in their athletic department, working with their athletes as a sports chiropractor, right? Being able to market yourself also as having a master's degree in exercise science, would, again, I think, raise the bar in regards to that athletic director paying more attention to you. Athletic directors may not know, and I know this for a fact, they may not know how much schooling went into being a doctor of chiropractic. I've been asked that question in this country and overseas. Is that a nine-month program? How long, how long, how much schooling did you have in order to become a chiropractor, right? They don't say doctor chiropractor, they say chiropractor. Yeah, it's a little bit more than nine months, right? Okay. A little more than nine months, but if you say you have a master's degree, everybody on the planet, right, it's an academic standard. Everybody know, everybody on the planet knows how much time and effort goes into a master's degree. So again, who would like to do anything internationally? Or am I the only stupid one in here? All right, good. So internationally, even with the diplomates, so many of you might be thinking, well, I'm interested in doing a diplomate in orthopedics or a diplomate in sports. I had a diplomate in sports through my residency, um, so I was actually um, having enough foresight to do that. But when I advertised myself to teach overseas in Australia, they had, even the chiropractors over there, the doctors of chiropractic, had no idea how much time went into a diplomate, right? And it's three years, 200 hours. Um, so it's fairly extensive, and it's not a one weekend deal. But if I had told them I had a master's degree in sports human performance, or master's degree in exercise science, they would know exactly. So I have, have lived it for the last couple decades on why I feel it's important to have a master's degree. I've been asked those questions, and I want to catch you now before you're too far into the program or well after you graduate, and instill in you this idea, this notion of considering a master's degree while you're here, while you have some energy, right? You have some tuition loans, maybe a little extra tuition loan money, because um, it's not a free master's degree. I'm sure you'll you understand that. We can talk about that later. Anybody else have any awesome ideas on why it's good to have a master's degree? Why am I compliment your doctor of chiropractic? I was actually going to lead off with that because you guys are smarter than I am. I thought you guys might come up with some better ideas. Yes? Yeah. Some of the other certifications you can get that would be similar, expire, or you have to keep paying for it for your 
Right, very good. So like my diplomate in sports chiropractic, I have to pay year after year after year, have CEUs and so on, in order to maintain that. Uh, where a master's degree, which I also have, I got my master's degree, I earned it, I paid for it, done. That's a done deal, don't do continuing education. Don't do uh, uh, pay like yearly membership fee, that's good enough. No? It shows that you have a diversity in, in your education not having the same like bachelor's and doctorate of chiropractic maybe here from just Northwestern it says, hey, look at I love it. I've got it. Right, I've had emails when we've been just sending emails out to all of you. I apologize if I send too many emails. But we've been marketing this a little bit and I've had some responses back saying, well, I'm a doctor of chiropractic, why do I need a master's degree I'm a doctor at a higher level? Well, it's a professional doctor, right? It's a little bit different than an academic graduate degree. And your professional doctorate is very focused on, on a single profession, as Noah said, where a master's degree does um, show that you've been able to accomplish higher levels of research, which you'll be required to do in this master's degree. Um, and it does broaden your, your uh, diversity and, and uh, capabilities in the profession a little bit more. It's great. Anything else before I turn it over to our Concordia University friends? Yes. If, if you decide you want to take a PhD program somewhere else, which a lot of times will be paid for, you have to have this first. Right? In America, you do. Yeah. Yeah. It calls them really a PhD just because uh, it is mother thing. So, um, outside of the, these American borders, though, we probably have to have a master's degree before you can enroll in a PhD. Mm -hmm. That's great. Who wants to get a PhD in here? A couple of you have to you can probably help. <laughs> Without, well, I don't want to take up much more of their time. I just wanted to make sure that we had a, a firm understanding on why you're here other than the, the free pizza. Right? Um, because I, I personally am very passionate about the, the type of doctor that we graduate from this program. Right? I believe Northwestern. I, I worked for a couple of other institutions before coming here again. It was really hard for me to really like, jump on board with these other institutions um, because when you cut me, you know, out came Northwestern Blue. So um, I'm passionate about the quality of, of DC that we graduate from here. And I know for a fact that having this type of added education is going to raise the bar in regards to this type of doctor you're going to be much more diverse and, and, and uh, deeper thinking. So I'm, I'm very happy to introduce Dr. Eric Lamont, who is the Provost from Concordia University, and Dr. Katie Fisher, the Department Chair of Kinesiology, and I'll turn the mic over to them. Awesome, thank you. Just remember that when you're taking my stats class when you get into Masters, okay? <laughs> um, I'm Dr. Eric Lamont. I'm the Provost and Chief Operating Officer. My background, my, my educational background, actually is in the same field, exercise science, health and wellness. Um, I teach at the master's level, at the uh, undergraduate level, biomechanics, exercise fitness, all those things. So I'm very passionate about your industry and how it interfaces with our industry in the, in the broader sector. So it was really great when uh, Tim and Katie were able to put together this partnership. We've had partnerships before, but I think this one's even, even more uh, interactive and, and particularly beneficial to you in the way they put this together to allow you to maximize as much of your doctoral coursework against our uh, masters, um, more so than you can get anywhere else. And that's something because we have such great respect for each other's curriculum and activities that we think that's a, a meaningful uh, opportunity for you as well as time to completion. You've spoken to a number of the things there. Let me just step up and, and talk a little bit about Concordia University first, to give you a sense if you're not fully aware of who we are. We're coming up on our 125th year uh, being here in Minnesota. We are the fastest growing university in the Twin Cities and in fact the state. Um, we have strategic growth plans in education, business, applied health sciences, of which this is a perfect marriage with, and uh, to continue to grow at the graduate level. And so this fits both of our, our, our windows. The other thing that we do that's a little different than others is we do the applied uh, the theory to practice modality, where we, like you're doing, you're learning all the mechanics Spinal column just left here before, but you're learning all the, the thoughts and the theories behind it, then you're turning that into physical, hands on, practical experience. And that's something that we believe in. Our alumni come out of both the undergraduate and graduate exercise science program, uh, move into their own industry. They move on into research. They move into the doctoral, advanced level degrees uh, programs. They uh, spread into the healthcare space. We have some moving into the aging space, some moving into the youth space, some moving into the athletic space. We try to make it as viable for you to pursue your career path as possible. So Concordia has been a, a partner for a long time with Northwestern. We're, we're excited to have this going forward. 
and you are the first and only institution that we're going this far in terms of a relationship where almost half of the credits themselves that you're taking at your uh, doctoral level will come into it. So your time to completion, your cost acquisition is lower. And then as many of you spoke to, the ability to, uh, to extend on your resume and on your LinkedIn and everywhere else these other entrees. And from, from our standpoint, we're actually always looking for more faculty too. And so having both the doctorate and the master's gives you a lot of viability as we grow into other spaces in, in the health sciences space as well. So I know you want to get into the meat of this, so I'm going to pass this off to Dr. Fisher and she will speak to the, the logistics of it. But I want to thank you all for coming here today and thinking about this and we look forward to hopefully having you in class soon. to come to us 
And then for our classes in the MS program, you would need to get a C for them to go back to Northwestern. Okay. I'm not expecting all of this to completely make sense. This is the first time we're seeing this. We have what's called a student contract, and it lays out exactly all of these information. So the classes that you need, the grades that you need, and you would get a copy of that. So just so you know, this is kind of informational purposes right now, and then you will get more information um, once you decide, yes, this is something that I do want to pursue. An important point to note is that in our MS program overall, we require a 3.0 GPA. So if you would fall beneath that, you know, we'd have to look at that, but in general, the 3.0 GPA is what you would need in order to graduate with the MS Exercise Science Group. Okay, those are the classes that you will take for the 40th for the MS Exercise Science. So again, start out 33 to 36 credits. We took away some of those other classes. This is what's left. So you have research methods, um, then stats, clinical exercise assessment, exercise description, exercise physiology, and then you would decide whether you want to choose a project-based option at Capstone or a research-based option is a thesis. So five classes are going to be the same regardless, and then you would make that decision based on what your career goals are um, as to whether you want to choose that capstone or thesis for that final project. And admissions requirements. Um, obviously, we need your information, so you have to complete an application. You would need an official transcript um, saying that you have a bachelor's degree conferred. So that's an important point to note is that a bachelor's degree is required before you can join the MS Exercise Science Program. I'll get into a little bit more in that in just a little bit. We also need um, a 3.0 GPA within that. So for your bachelor's, whatever it was, that's not including your chiropractic coursework. So just within that bachelor's, a 3.0 would be required. If you would be beneath that for any reason, you can petition to still be accepted. We've had students get accepted. But we do want to see more about why you believe you're going to be successful. You could talk about, I've had um, great GPA within my chiropractic coursework. This is really my passion. Um, you know, so you can talk with us individually if you fall into that category, but just know that in general terms, we expect a 3.0 GPA. You will also have to provide us with a copy of your unofficial Northwestern transcripts. Uh, the reason for that is we want to just double check how you're doing right now. And then we also want to see what trimester you're in. We allow students to take both programs simultaneously starting at T6. So if you would be before that, you could say, yeah, I want to do this, but you won't actually be able to start until T6 or later. Let's say you're in T8, T9, T10, you're getting closer to the end of your program. This still is, you can still join this. Um, we've just said T6 might be better. Um, that way it gives you a few semesters to work on it, but we can make anything work if you want to do it. Okay, so that's going to be some of these individual conversations to say, where exactly do I fit? What's the best schedule for me? Um, that's something that you know might be those be better for those individual conversations. And then the student contract. So the student contract we have, um, it seems lengthy. It's not signing your life away, don't worry. It's just, here are all the details of the partnership. What goes where? What, what grades do I need? What GPA? Even what does my financial aid look like? What's the process that I use to pay for classes? So all of that information is included in the student contract. Um, one point I want to go back to, so I think there have been a few questions about whether a bachelor's degree, um, let's say I don't have one yet, can I still join this? What I would suggest is we've looked at Concordia's policies. We're going to take a look at them more in detail. Right now we can't allow that. You would have to have a bachelor's degree. So just from Concordia's perspective, you need that bachelor's degree. From Northwestern's perspective, though, is when you do the chiropractic doctorate, if you don't have a bachelor's degree, you can also earn the bachelor's degree through Northwestern. They said most students can be awarded that bachelor's degree around T6. So if you're around that T6 range, you can talk to the registrar's office and have them do a um, degree evaluation to see if you can earn that bachelor's degree already. Um, some students, depending, let's say you have a really long undergraduate background, but you just never finish off the bachelor's, you could potentially finish earlier than T6. So I don't want to say exact terms. That's, again, going to be an individual conversation with the registrar's office. But just know that it appears as though you could get your bachelor's degree conferred a little earlier than the end of your program. So take a look at that, talk to the registrar, and we will also talk, again, through Concordia, through Northwestern, a few more of those details. Okay. Again, that student contract, it's getting very specific. So it's talking the partnership details, it's talking financial aid, it's talking the admissions requirements, just because you're seeing it here, um, you know, you might have questions afterward, but that contract really outlines the main points of this partnership. The key point is that you will need faculty recommendations from your current chiropractic um, faculty, so you will have to get two signatures from Northwestern chiropractic faculty, and their um, 
recommendation is implied when they sign your form. So they've been trained, they know that if they're gonna sign your form, they are recommending you to be accepted into the MS Exercise Science Program and that they believe you would be successful. So if you take that contract to them, they would know what it is, so you don't really have to describe that uh, process. How are you gonna pay for this? Okay. A few things. Um, one is, starting right off the bat, you are gonna get a $1,000 partner scholarship. So because we work together with Northwestern, we're gonna take $1,000 right off the top. Our current tuition right now is 475 credit. So if you would take 475 credit and multiply it over those 18 credits, it would be 85.50. You take $1,000 off that, 75.50. The really, I'll say, tough part um, is this consortium agreement. You are taking a financial aid for your chiropractic coursework. You have a certain financial aid package that Northwestern puts together. So you're about right here. For the two specific classes, KHS 595 and KHS 615, what you will go and do is say, okay, Northwestern Financial Aid Office, I would like to take these classes and they can count toward my chiropractic career. So what they're gonna do is say, we believe you might be able to get this much. So that amount would go a little higher, so you'd get a little more financial aid, and then you would use that financial aid to pay Concordia for those classes. Okay. The reason for the consortium agreement is you are only eligible to have one home institution one program really, that's your home program. So because you're a full-time student here, Northwestern Health Sciences is considered the home institution, and so any financial aid package comes through that. Not all of the master's courses can count toward that, only because not all of them can count toward the, the doctor of chiropractic course, that program. Okay, so only those two courses are <coughs> eligible for the financial aid consortium agreement the other classes would have to be paid um, either through student loan, uh, any overages that you get with your current Northwestern financial aid, or using that Northwestern or that partner scholarship, that thousand dollars. Okay, I would recommend checking with Northwestern because just because we think your financial aid might go up a little bit, it's so dependent, and you guys know that just with talking to them, it's going to be on a case by case basis. So talk with them about the details, but just know you do have a few options. Um, so you have that thousand dollars that's going to be applied over three semesters in your program and then you have the other um, options whether it's the refund money that you're already getting or if you want to pursue that consortium agreement for those two specific classes okay who's eligible if you meet the admissions requirements you're going to get it okay so i talked about those earlier that's going to have a 3.0 gpa with a bachelor's degree doing that student contract and included in that student contract again is faculty recommendations um, and then just the admissions, um, the application that you'll complete in addition to your unofficial Northwestern. You might be asking why unofficial Northwestern versus an official. I want to save you even a few dollars. Um, so I believe the transfer courses that you complete that come into Concordia, those aren't going to be completed until T8 or 9. And so if you give us a transcript when you apply an official one, and then you have to give us another one, that's two. I'd rather just have you do one. It's not that much money, but it's still a way to help you save a little bit of money. And so we get the unofficial to start, and then you'll send us the official after all of those transfer courses have been completed. Okay, and again, you must wait until trimester six to actually begin the MS program. <coughs> okay, if you're interested, um, you can go to csp.edu backslash um, nwhsu. So you can go directly there. It has all the information that I'm talking about. It has a student contract and has more information about who you can contact, um, and that is Louise Earhart. She is right outside, actually right back there. So if you have questions, you can even apply today. You can just ask general questions, and she'd be able to answer them, and then we can answer um, questions right now. Even. So are there any questions? All right. Why exactly is it T6? Is it, does it have to do with prerequisite material, or is it supposed to be the time? Yeah, it's in the text of the program. Yeah, we really want you to focus on your first two years of chiropractic school before enrolling into a whole other project. And that's a similar philosophy with a lot of things on campus in regards to additional research projects you want to do on, on the side. Is, does that faculty want you to be able to focus on the basic science and your clinical science before adding on? Could it be, so as an example, I'm a full split student, and so my first two years are actually going to be the lightest love I have with the whole program. You know, is it something that I'd have to look at your individual curriculum, but right now the articulation agreement um, says T6. So 
breaks to start? Is that the only, that's what the contract, uh, student contract also states? I would say as far as Concordia is concerned, we're gonna defer to Northwestern, so if they believe it's gonna be the best for you, so C6, we would wait, but if they believe, yeah, you're gonna have a lighter load, we could then talk about um, whether or not you could start earlier. The way that our classes operate, you take one class at a time, and so when you take those classes that haven't been met, you would take one class for seven weeks, and within those seven weeks, you would have a one-hour uh, video conferencing chat with the instructor and your classmates. And then everything else, whether it's assignments, discussion boards, um, whatever, whatever other projects would be completed in the class, that would be done on your own time. So it's just that one hour, we'll say in class, uh, that's completed in the virtual online video conferencing software. You would do that on your own, and then everything else would be uh, on your own. So one hour that you're required to be somewhere, everything else is on your own. And then you would just complete that program in sequence until you're done. So you could do first half semester, second half semester, as soon as you begin, first half, second half, first half, second half. So this could only take you three semesters if you push all the way through. Um, alternatively, you might say, you know what, I just wanna take one class per semester, we can definitely work with that as well. So it's just gonna be a conversation once you let us know what you're interested in, we can look at what our classes availability are and then we'll, we'll make that schedule work. If we're further along in the Arrow program, can we, is there a certain order or can we take, say, the classes that are going to um, fulfill requirements for both so that we can get those done to graduate the CARO program and finish the MS program after we graduate? So the reason we have, ideally that it would be T6, is hopefully it'd be done by T10 just because financial aid purposes. But if you say, you know what, I don't really care about the financial aid side of it, I want to make sure I complete it. We can come up with any schedule. The one thing I would say is we do want them taking one class at a time for a few reasons. One, research methods is gonna help set the foundation for your final project, so that class is gonna have to be first. The statistics class then is building on that for, toward that final project in addition to covering obviously the stats information. Then if you're talking exercise assessment, you need that class before you get into prescription. Physiology, again, it's gonna build on some of that, so I don't wanna get too out of sequence. Um, and then we want to begin with that research methods class because with that final project, if you're taking and trying to condense and do only, let's say, one semester, you're definitely not going to be able to complete the capstone and thesis requirements in that amount of time. It's going to take you much longer to do. So by taking the one class at a time, you're going to be able to take your classes and then on the side also have that final project that you're working on as well. So financial aid reasons, that's the reason why it's best to complete by T10, but it's not an absolute requirement if you don't financially Sam, there's some strategy within the chiropractic program as well. So we have NMS3 and PT3 where you have some soft tissue exercise uh, content as well as PT3 is mostly all therapeutic exercise, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what is that, T7, PT3, T7? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. So you'll be in T7 or maybe even beyond T7 by the time you take the clinical exercise assessment and the, exor and the exercise prescription course, right? So in other words, you have a base knowledge from your curriculum with Dr. Um, Andy Klein and Dr. Osborne. So there's a little bit of strategy, believe it or not, to this madness that we're presenting to you. But um, I, I think in regards to the alignment of our chiropractic curriculum to this, I think it works out really well if we start with T6. Okay. But again, if you are later, you still can get caught up, or you know, if you're in T, T9, this still is appropriate for you, you can still pursue it. It's just those financial reasons that are things that we have to consider. see in it, how much can that be worked with? Or can that be fixed, or what can that be done? So what could be done is retaking the class as a possibility. Um, so just depending on how that works. Another option could be that you just add that three class, three credit class in it for you. Okay. So let's say you know you meet most of it except for one class. Right now it is the beer higher, so you could just take that three credit class at for you. Um, that's again a case by case basis. We can talk that through. I like, I like to problem solve, and I don't know if this has ever been done, maybe Susan can, can comment as well, but if you got a C in a class, right, could you do an additional project, maybe, um, do a little lip review on mental health, for example, which was a prereq for the sports psychology course, right? So if you got C's in mental health, could you do some additional work, present that back to the instructor, 
and see if you can't get your grade both from, from a C to a B. I don't know if we can do that, Susan. It hasn't been done here, but just because it hasn't been done doesn't mean we can't necessarily do it, but we might not be able to do it. But that's how I would problem solve it. I'd be willing to meet with Susan and other academics on campus to see if we can solve that problem. I think a key point, obviously you're getting kind of caught in, well, I'm already at T6 or I'm later in my program, so I wasn't able to plan and really know what the requirements were. Talk to us. We want to be able to help with some of these um, individual situations. But for those that are early in your program, just remember, as you're looking at the courses, be your hire. Or when you're coming at Concordia, see your hire if you want to transfer back to your classroom. Yeah. Did I hear that right? That all the classes will be online? Yep. Yep. So all the classes are offered fully online. And so you would just be one hour per week, you're online using that video conferencing software. And then everything else will be completed online, but on your own. We, are, we have due dates, so it's not like we want all the coursework to wait till the very end of the class. So we keep weekly um, with the, the content, and then yeah, in the seven weeks you'll get done, that move to the next one. So within the semester, you would take one class during the first half, one class during the second half. That's your semester, then you move on to the next semester. I'm just wondering, have you guys taught these classes online before? Because mm -hmm. I feel like in person, hands on is pretty important. But I guess if you find that it's been effective, yeah, and you can talk to Dr. Elizabeth Moose, uh, my second year fellow in the Human Performance Center. She's probably two thirds of the way through the Master's in Exercise Science program through Concordia University. And I know with me talking to her personally, she raves about it, but she'll be honest with you, right? And talk to her about it. Um, I think she'll give you some good feedback on how the whole process has gone for her and how much time it, it took. I would say, I mean, it's using case studies, it's using some of that information, using software that's available now. So, I mean, I think. I, I think we do a good job at delivering the curriculum. Um, now, with that said, if students say, I want to do this on campus at Northwestern, we have great individuals working as faculty in the chiropractic program. <laughs> 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 We'd be able to look at offering it on site here. So that's always something that if we see that most students want it here, we're, we want to do what's best for you. So if that's delivering it here, we can look into that option. In regards to how to do this online, we're going to be offering a training session here on campus. Is it December 1st? I believe so, I think yeah. we decided December 1st. Uh, we'll announce this. So if you've applied, we'll have your names and email contact details. We'll send you information on when we're going to train you how to do your online educational program. It should be a quick training. It's a matter of um, booting up the, the video technology and how to go about it. We just want you to feel comfortable with navigating the online systems. So it, it's not like it's going to take a lot of work to what are they getting me into with this online format. We just want you to feel comfortable so that way once you hit day one in your class, you're going to hit the ground running. So you really don't have to worry about the technology behind it. You can focus on the content within the courses. Was there a chance you could go back to that couple of slides where you had your classes and then equivalently classes like this? Very tiny wording. So like the classes on the right hand side, you will have had to have received a B or higher in those courses. And if you have fallen short, feel free to chat with me or the instructor of that course and see if we can be creative and get that grade up. And again, I didn't include this like in print all wise, just because if you go to csp.edu backslash nwhsu, this entire list is on there. So if you just want to pull out your phone and just take a look at it, that way for future planning, you can take a look and see what classes, or if you've taken those classes, you can see which ones are actually required. And even to this point, just a couple other reminders. Um, this articulation was put into play both between your faculty and our faculty, so they work together to match those outcomes. And then there's also a balance between a three-term uh, trimester model and a two-semester trimester model. So that's the other characteristic that comes into play. Things worked out quite nicely. Mm -hmm. The other question that I received from somebody else was, was could we have more of our, of our doctoral courses count towards the rest of the masters? And, and no, you can't. And the reason for that is, just to be transparent, no. Uh, the reason for that is because accrediting agencies require at least half of the major to be offered by the host institution. And so that's the, the element. So we have actually, this is the only institution and partnership that we have taken it beyond a 12 credit um, uh, uh, sharing of credits. Uh, so I think that's, uh, we, we've tried to, to do our share to make this time sensitive, viable for you uh, fiscally, and then also to, to leverage off all the learning knowledge you've acquired in your doctoral program. So very excited for that. I think at this point, maybe we could break it up and then if you have individual questions, you want to come down and talk to one of us or some of our admissions people. 
um, that would be a fun give you guys a chance to get to your next class. Also, stretch your legs a little bit. So, thank you for coming, and uh, we appreciate uh, your. Uh,